In a minimalist rock crawler, having a stereo system is a luxury rather than a necessity. But sometimes it's a welcome luxury to be able to crank some tunes while you're blasting out to the trailhead or, you know, while you're sitting in your buggy, waiting on your buggies to clear through an obstacle. But uh, if you do install a stereo in your rock crawler, keep the system simple and lightweight. Keep it minimalist. You know, adding a complicated competition style audio system in your rock crawler really is counterproductive to the build. Also, be mindful that any stereo you stall, install in an open style rock crawler like this buggy behind me is going to be exposed to moisture, dust, and mud. You know, the system has to be able to handle extreme vibrations and shock loads that come with the rigors of rock crawling. So don't install something that isn't built for this environment. And don't buy extremely expensive components that can't be readily replaced when they break. You have four basic options for installing tunes in your rock buggy. A car type head unit system, a marine type system, a Bluetooth amp system, or a Bluetooth sound bar. The car type system is the worst option for a rock buggy in my opinion. Car head units are not weather and dust resistant. The head units are unnecessarily large and heavy, and they're pretty fragile in construction. Also, most stereos of this type have a CD player, which is totally unusable while off-roading. A Bluetooth amp system is basically just an amp with Bluetooth capability connected to a couple of speakers. There's no head unit, so the system needs to be controlled through a smartphone or through your iPod. The advantages to the system is that the amp can be hidden behind the dash or under a seat, and you could send more wattage to the speakers than your average head unit will allow. The disadvantage to the system is that you solely rely on Bluetooth and having a charged phone. You know, Bluetooth can be a pain in the ass sometimes. I also hate fumbling with my phone on the trail to turn volume down or to change songs, especially while strapped into a harness. This type of system is very popular in ATVs, motorcycles, and golf carts. You know, it's simple and it just plain works. Next is the all-in-one stereo system. The most common type is the Bluetooth soundbar, but they also make other all-in-one systems specifically made for UTVs. This is the simplest system to install because it basically only requires a two-wire hookup. But these all-in-one units are quite large and take up a lot of valuable space. They're also heavy and pretty damn expensive. And to make matters worse, the sound quality is the worst of the bunch in my opinion, and most of them have uh, no uh, options to expand the system. I ran a wet sound sound bar in my buggy for a few years, and I pretty much hated it overall. And lastly, we have the Marine Style Media Center. These are fully self-contained all-in-one head units that do Bluetooth, AM, FM radio, weather band, and could play music from a USB flash drive. These can be run without an amp, but have the ability to expand and add amps. These are made to fit in round gauge openings, making the install very clean and easy. Most marine style media units are waterproof, shockproof, and corrosion resistant, making them a good match for a rock crawler. These have all the advantages of a car style head unit and a Bluetooth amp, but without the drawbacks. For this application, I chose to run the KMC2 Media Center for my rock buggy. There's various other products like this one out there, like the uh, Boss Audio Radio, you know, and they come in at a cheaper price than this kicker unit. But I've actually seen this little media center in use on boats and side-by-sides, and the users had nothing but great things to say about these. So uh, this is what I chose. They sell these at uh, Best Buy and my local boating supply store for $200, but uh, I got this on Amazon for $170 with free shipping. This uh, 
KMC2 unit is fully self-contained and it plays Bluetooth music, AM, FM radio, weather band, and can play from a USB thumb drive. Inside this big heat sink is a 200 watt four channel amplifier. The face of the unit is waterproof. Well, that's what they claim. And uh, the rest of the unit is highly weather resistant. This unit was primarily made for marine environments. So it's probably a really good fit in a rock buggy. It has uh, RCA inputs and outputs. So it's highly expandable and capable of uh, integrating an amp. It has a uh, AM FM radio antenna connector. It's set up to run a remote control. And uh, it has a nice removable connector for all the speaker and power wires. But, uh, the th but the thing I love the most about this unit is its ability to play songs off of a thumb drive. Isn't that cool? You see, while out rock crawling, I'm constantly getting in and out of my rock buggy, you know, to spot for people, to recover flop rigs, to take video, or just to stand around and talk shit while people get denied on obstacles. The point is that I'm constantly getting in and out of my buggy, and I don't want to mess with a Bluetooth connection constantly. You know, it's kind of a pain in the ass. <clears throat> also, I really don't like running down the juice on my phone to play Bluetooth music. So, I like to load up hundreds of songs on a USB drive and simply just plug it into the media center and uh, play my music off of that. You know, rather than messing with Bluetooth. And... It's really easy to navigate up and down through your music on your thumb drive through this head unit. You know, this little kicker media center really does it all. Also, unlike similar units, the control buttons on the front of the kicker KMC2 are uh, big and easy to read. You know, so my... Crappy eyes can see what I'm doing. You know, and I could, these buttons are also big, so I can operate this unit while wearing gloves while I'm out winter wheeling. The Boss Audio unit, that's a lot cheaper than this kicker. You know, it's got really tiny buttons that are hard to read and use. So the kicker has the best button layout of any of these types of media centers that I've seen. So... Let's get this bad boy installed. You can see here, I have it installed inside the dash right there. It's actually really nice and flush. And uh, all you have to do is get one of these three and five eighths inch hole saws and uh, line it up, drill that out and it slips right in. Now you just need to wire it up. So I wired up these two uh, six and a half inch Alpine speakers in this little pod. And it'll cut out for my roll bar right there. And uh, these are just, you know, budget priced uh, Alpine speakers. I've always had good luck with the Alpine brand. Even uh, their lower end stuff seems to be better than uh, than Pioneer and some of the others. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Also on this little uh, speaker pod for ATVs, I get for UTVs I got right here. In the corner, there's a little gap between the screw hole there, and I didn't really like this. I felt it, you know it might crack this plastic, so. I cut these little 
graphite spacers right here and uh, put those to fill the gap up to have something to kind of take the crush load so I don't crack this plastic. So I got the initial install done on this. I got some MP3 music on here. I don't have a subwoofer installed yet. I'm just running these two uh, six and a half inch Alpines right here in this UTV pod. And uh, let me see, I'll let you hear it. So I want this radio to have uh, AM FM stereo capacity. I mean, hell, I wheel a lot on Sundays and I don't want to miss the football game. So at the very least I can get reception and listen to a football game maybe. So I got this cheap hidden antenna off of Amazon. It gets really good reviews. There's a lot of, this is sold under a lot of different brand names and you can find it from anywhere from $10 up to $20. So it's cheap. Even if it doesn't work out that good, um, you know. I'm not at a lot of money, so basically you plug this into the uh, antenna jack on the KMC2, and then uh, you peel this adhesive backing off and uh, stick it up, and apparently it works pretty damn good as an antenna, so we're going to install this right now. Okay, as you can see, I mounted this little mini antenna up here and uh, ran it down with my speaker pod wires. Back to the back of the head unit back here. And uh, we're going to see how this little antenna does. So uh, I have to say, I'm pretty damn impressed with this little antenna right here. I uh, basically, be mindful, I'm inside of an enclosed garage right now, but I literally couldn't get one radio station with the antenna not connected, and now with this little Amazon hidden antenna, I can get about 20 stations now really clear inside my garage, so... Just in case you're wondering, these cheap ass little ant hidden antennas, they actually seem to work. Also, what I plan to do on this build is add this powered compact subwoofer to the system. This is a Kenwood's KSC SW11 subwoofer. And basically what this is, is this is a subwoofer a box and an amplifier all in one and this is only 11 inches long seven inches wide and about uh, two and a half two and three quarter inches wide so this is very compact and it'll fit anywhere you know remember at the beginning of the video when I said you want to keep things simple and having a little compact subwoofer like this that's an amp a sub and a box all in one little small compact unit is very advantageous to this build and uh, where I plan to put this is uh, behind the passenger seat right here. And, uh, you know, this is going to give my system a little bit of bass punch. You know, it'll complement the six and a half inch speakers I have up here pretty well. You know, and I know, I understand this isn't going to give me big teeth rattling bass. 
this is basically just going to add some good lows and some punch to the system and uh, and really round the system out. And like I said, because this is so compact and easy to package and wire up, and it's an amp, a box, and a sub all in one little compact package, it really does make the system simple. And that's what we're going for in this build. So in conclusion, I'm very happy with the tunes in my buggy now. You know, I'm no longer a slave to Bluetooth because I can listen to radio stations and music from a USB thumb drive, you know, and I don't have to fumble with my phone to control the volume or change songs now, which I really enjoy. You know, I'm really, really happy that I got rid of that stupid wet sound sound bar that was in my buggy. You know, it weighs about double the weight of the current system. And frankly, it sounded like crap, you know, seriously, my beats pill, my little tiny beats pill, you know, it seems like it has more bass than this thing did, you know, and to make matters worse, this damn thing cost me $600. Like I already stated, with the uh, Kicker Media Center, the Alpine speakers, the hidden antenna that I installed, and the speaker enclosure box, I have about $300 into the system currently. You know, if I went with the Boss Audio uh, MGR350B or whatever the number is of that round Boss Audio head unit, you know, if I went with that and didn't buy the speaker enclosure, I could have did this whole system in my buggy for about $130. You know, the pros of the Boss Audio unit is that it's smaller and you only have to drill a three inch hole versus a three and five eighths inch hole. So it does package smaller, but the Boss Audio system does not play from a USB thumb drive, even though it'll charge a, a phone from one. And the Boss Audio system has very small buttons, which I didn't like. You know, when I added a compact powered subwoofer to the system, you know, it cost me another $130 but it really rounded out the base and complemented the system overall. You know, whether you go with a marine style media center like I did, or you opt for a, a marine grade Bluetooth amp or something like that, you know, it's relatively easy and inexpensive and simple to get a decent sounding music source in your rock crawler. You know, once again, thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my content, and as always, keep the rubber side down.